key part that later comes on is making sure that you know everything's embedded and actually used uh, and is useful and continues to be useful to the, the the businesses you know what would be the point in investing the the time and resource to create something fantastic if nobody's using it uh, no one's getting any benefit from it and so the the, the the kind of structure of the people data center being embedded you know across the the, the unilever's business is really fantastic in that way is there's that direct connection to you know the end um, kind of business stakeholder for them to you know see the magic and, and, and the insight and for them to be able to use the findings um, and bring it to to their work you know every day mm. that's come a lot more streamlined obviously there was lots of kind of learning along the way but we're now at a stage where you know there is a that, that kind of you know um, set kind of process yeah i think the point you make there about landing the insights in the business is, is really important one i think lots of companies are doing data science they're starting to experiment with ai but they're they're not seeing the value of their investment. I think one of the things uh, within the People Data Center is they are very close to the business and you have this concept of, of uh, data storytellers who will take those insights and they'll put them in a way that the marketing folks can understand who may not be the best, most technical people, but they want to be able to use those insights to make changes to their brands or their products. So I think that's something uh, really interesting. No, absolutely. Just to kind of um, uh, to, to make the point is that sometimes in a um, in, in kind of like a, a, an analytical output, um, the actual analytics might be in the appendix, um, and the, the the bit that's kind of uh, the the stress is on the, the the holistic consumer story that those analytics have told us. Um, it's you know, if you if you read a children's book um, at night, as uh, I often read to my my children, there's there's very rarely charts and graphs and you know r squareds and things like that in it it's um uh, a compelling tale about a gruffalo or, so, or something like that um and it's that kind of storytelling that's really important to really land the the the, the point and that's not only in a you know a, a presentation but also in a in a service in a you know maybe a dashboard the dashboard has to tell a story tell it compellingly tell it quickly and easily otherwise you know you've lost the reader and the book goes away back on the shelf um, probably never to be read again which is unfortunate because sometimes you know these uh, you know just industry-wide the, the the fantastic things that you know analytics that go on um, uh, it'd be a real shame if you know these were were, were not used by the, the the business that they serve so going forward how are Unilever trying to become more data driven in the marketing with the help of the people data center when we take all of this data together that we have, you know, all of the the, the, the millions and millions of data points, um, it enables us to engage far more closely with our consumers um, than ever before. And, you know, we're, we're able to be data driven in our understanding of the consumer. So we can engage with them on a more personal level by understanding them better. We can serve our audiences more meaningful and relevant content, achieving hyper personalization at scale. Um, so it's in, in, in this environment, our, our data-driven marketing teams are kind of pivoting quickly to consumer needs and focusing hard on performance marketing and driving, um, uh, you know, PII data collection in light of a, a cookie-less world. So um, uh, the PDC is really helping Unilever to rapidly move from mass marketing to personalization at scale. Traditionally, mass marketing was the norm. Everyone would see the same campaign, you know, the same advert on TV, even if it was irrelevant to your needs or interests as a human. Um, and through kind of advanced clustering on social media data, for instance, the PDC can identify particular audiences and target the right messages that are relevant to those people um, at the right time. Um, we're also, for instance, able to identify the best influencers to partner with on our campaigns by analysing the overlap between our brands and our target market and that that influences audiences so that all of this and you know m many other things are resulting in a more personalized um, data-driven marketing campaigns for consumers from Unilever. So John as a data scientist um, you know I guess people probably look at you and see this you know huge specialist um, whose, whose skills are unfortunately bottled inside of you and um, kind of limited to what you have the capacity to to work on um, you, you actually help us uh, helped us at Unilever kind of 
move towards a citizen data science model. Um, uh, what are your kind of thoughts on um, uh, what we've done and how we've done it? Yeah, so I think people often see with data scientists is, and in our team that you know they are on their own, you know, and very specialised, and it's hard to kind of get that out into the wider business. So I think one thing that we tried to do was build tools to enable other people to do this sort of uh, analysis uh, through citizen data science. So um, working with tools like Data IQ to build uh, plugins and different tools that analysts of the business could use and making it more accessible, lowering the barrier, lowering the barrier to entry. Um, I think that's really important. And I think often it's to the wider business, a lot of uh, this new area of machine learning and AI to a lot of companies is quite um, inaccessible and opaque. So what we really tried to do was kind of cross that barrier, make it more accessible and uh, get it those insights into the hands of the business so they can actually make real decisions to change the products that Unilever are putting out there and uh, essentially um, deliver a better service to their customers. Yeah, I think it's I think it's interesting um, that you know uh, something that we you know at the start of our kind of people data center journey would look at and say what a specialized skill we've now got analysts across uh, the the kind of PDC universe able to incorporate AI and machine learning into their briefs directly within um, uh, and via Data IQ plugins. Um, which is, you know, fantastic. I, you know, I can go in and, and, and do some data science. Um, I'm not a, a, yeah, no, I'm not a data scientist by, by training for sure. But um, I can do data science now. As uh, we've got plugins in Data IQ to let me do it, um, which is fantastic. Yeah, and I think I think on that, there's always going to be a role for specialists to to make sure things are, are robust and uh, you know the insights are. Um, well tested and true, but I think there is um, the way things are heading. It is becoming more and more uh, democratized um, and accessible, and more and more companies are starting to to look at these things and see how can we use this in our company to drive sales, reduce costs, or um, uh, reduce risk. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it's an interesting time. I think there's a lot of challenges uh, that, that we've seen in, in the People Data Center, but I think we're moving slowly and surely in, in the right direction. And actually, it's interesting. The um, uh, you mentioned you always need specialists because indeed that that is certainly true. Um, so you need the specialists to build the plugins in the in the first place, and also just to have um, to be able to to teach people how to to use them. Um, so our, our PDC University program, where we train analysts, or part of what we do via PDC University is train analysts how to use plugins. You know everything there from um, uh, any kind of statistical outputs, what what they mean and how they should be interpreted, all the way through to you know, understanding some of the kind of complex data flows and um, you know what to what to keep in mind so no absolutely you whilst we um, have been able to you know certainly democratize lots of the analytics that we that we do and have the likes of me go in and do some data science it, it for sure um, you need to have those specialists there as part of a, a program like PDC University or on hand to make sure that you know um, uh, the people understand what they're what they're working with and don't just you know go nuts on uh, some outputs that you know might be used incorrectly um, so yeah absolutely specialists and just making sure that the time is taken to train people that they understand on what it is they're using and what it means um, in the output and the the kind of story that you can or cannot tell based on that and we've talked a lot about um, marketing and how the people data center has uh, linked in with the business there. What other parts of Unilever has the People Data Center helped with uh, outside of marketing? Most of it, I think. So we've we've helped um, our HR function, our customer development function, um, our uh, supply chain uh, function, our quality function, um, and I'm probably forgetting one off the top of my off my head. So we 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 do more than just marketing for sure. We're um, helping, you know, um, 
uh, where needed other parts of the, the Unilever business. The predominant part of what we do is is marketing. As you can imagine, a lot of the questions come from marketing when we're, when we're kind of focused on people, people questions and people data. We, we've certainly helped other functions outside of marketing. So Jason, could you give an example of a non-marketing service that the People Data Centre has built? Yeah, so um, for our corporate communications organization we helped with or are helping with continuing to um, PR monitoring and alerting um, so it applies natural language processing to um, social media mentions of a given brand or issue to detect changes in negative sentiment and um, other particular metrics that we're interested in to automatically send an alert when a potential issue is detected so it helps by um, uh, allowing the guys and the teams to respond quicker and more effectively to consumer issues. Um, as you know, if you if you just the, the beauty of this tool is it's you know it's it's set up to 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 ping the people that can do something and respond to the issue. Uh, you know, whereas you might think in a without this tool, how what's the path to having this person find out about this issue? There's probably two or three people involved um, and it just can take you know that little bit longer um, uh, to for, for things to start moving which is you know in some of the kind of sensitive crises that um, Unilever's experience can be you know every second counts so um, yeah that's a uh, one of the ways we've we've helped a non-marketing function so John you've been part of our you know people data center journey and you've you've been listening to what i've got to say what do you make of it or what's your kind of what are you taking away from this so what i'm taking away is that um, consumers are changing in this current environment quicker than ever uh, there's um, a lot of trends around people working from home more they're buying things online more they're behaving in different ways and a lot of companies are struggling to adapt with that not just in uh, consumer goods but across different industries and I think the companies that will uh, come out best from this and, and uh, do best in the future are the ones that can best understand the voice of the consumer uh, and the best way to do that right now is through uh, data science analytics. Um, there is a wealth of information out there that um, can help companies better maneuver and, and deliver better services to their uh, end users um, whether that's what they're saying on online what they're buying from the different companies um, what reviews are they're putting online um, there's consumers giving their opinion on what they want i think it's just up for companies to listen um, and i think a lot of what's been done the people data center is is a template of how to do that i just think that um, that's going to have to evolve and, and keep up the pace uh, as we as we move forward. Change is the only constant, I guess. That is right. <laughs> so Jason, thanks very much for your time. Um, Thank it's you. It's been a really interesting conversation um, and look forward to speaking soon. Cheers. Thank you, John. Speak soon.